Okay. Um, so um, let's go ahead and start. And we are doing problem number six. You will start with A. So problem A basically says that I have X of T and X of T is given as three U of minus T minus five T plus two plus three U minus T plus three. Okay. And then H of T for this, this problem prop part A is given as equal to E to the minus two T U of minus two plus T. Fair enough. Okay. So, so we're going to go through our process. We are doing a convolution. This is, uh, we were doing problem six U A and this is a convolution. All right. So what is the first thing we need to do? The first thing we need to do is write X of tau, right? So, um, so we, we, let's, let's, this is the, our first time we are doing this. So let's do it one step at a time. Let's go ahead and the first thing is let's draw X of T. So X of T, um, and if, if, you, if you're not too used to this one, you wanna do it individually. But in our case, we've done a few of these things. So maybe we can kind of shortcut some steps and hopefully don't cause ourselves too much of an error. So we know this one is equal to one when t is what? Less than or equal to zero, right? Because minus t minus t has to be larger or equal to zero, which means t has to be less than or equal to zero. This one says t has to be larger or equal to minus two. And this one basically, this is minus t plus three, so this has to be larger than zero, which means t has to be less than or equal to three. How are we doing so far? And please stop me if I do something that's not quite right, okay? So what it basically says, look, I've got less than three and I've got less than zero. So if, if, if it was just up to this guy and from zero back, it will be five, right? And I'm sorry, it would be three. So from zero back would be three. It would be three because of this guy. The other one is three as well. Okay. And then the other one says there is a contribution that happens from three back, which is going to be three also because the magnitude is three. This is unfortunate. There are too many threes in here. So basically says, okay, from here, I'm going to go this way. And the magnitude of this is three. And then from here, I go back again, and the magnitude is three. So three plus three is six. And then the minus five says, at, uh, I'm sorry, minus five says there's a magnitude of minus five starts at minus two. So at this point, right? So there is one that comes down and runs for minus five. So everybody agrees with that? I got to see yeses. And no's I'll take two either way. So if you don't agree, let me know as well. I, but I got to get an answer from everybody. I've got half of you guys, so somebody's not answering. Ryan, Savannah, Steven. All right. I don't know where Savannah and Ryan are, but you. Please, uh, if you don't know where the yes and no's are, they're in the participant side of things, okay? So everybody's okay with this. And so that basically says, here I've got a six, right? I've got a six coming all the way to here. At this point, because I have a minus five, I dump, drop down to one, right? When I go here, I lose another three, so I'm down, so this was minus one. So at this point, I'm going to drop, I'm plus one, sorry. I'm down here, I drop to minus two. And when I get here, I lose this last three, I drop to minus five. So I'm running at minus five. So far, so good. So, so this is, this. I got my X of T figured out. Let's go down here and I'm going to run down and figure this one out. This one is kind of 
simpler and more complicated depending on how you look at it. That, yes. Uh, can you explain again is uh, how did you write draw the X, X of T graph? So XFT has, okay, so XFT has three components, right? Yeah. This component basically says what? It says it's going to have a value of three from minus infinity up to zero. Mm -hmm. And this one says it's going to have, uh, it's going to have a value of minus five when T is larger than minus two, which is here, right? Yeah, yeah. And then this one says it's gonna have a value of three, contribution of three from this term, as long as T is less than three, so that. Are you, are you agreeing to the components, right? Yeah, yeah. Then all I said, it says, okay, let's come, this is the first time something changes, right? Oops, don't mean to move the camera. Uh, here, right? So it says from, at this point, I got three plus three, fair enough? Yeah, which is six which is six, so that's a six. At this point, I, at this point, I get add a minus five to it. Okay. So now I'm down to, I had a six, and now I got a minus five, so I'm at one, plus one. Then I go to zero, at zero, I lose another three. The three goes away. The uh, contribution from this goes away. So I fall down to minus two. So now at three, I lose the other three contribution, which I fall down to minus five. So this becomes my X of T. How are we doing? Any other questions? All right. So this one we get here, yeah, I could get fancy, but, but minimum I have to figure out where it's zero, where it's not zero. So this has got to be larger than zero, which means T has to be less than uh, 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 sorry t has to be larger or equal to two right if this inside is larger or equal to zero t has to be larger or equal to two do you uh, hopefully everybody sees that so so that basically tells me that h of t i can plot simply by saying it is zero all the way to two right at two and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of, uh, for this kind of work, if you get too wrapped up what e to the minus 2 looks like, it gets, it gets kind of complicated. So, and I really don't need to know for, to, to do the graphicals method. I really don't have to know what the curve of e to the minus 2 looks like. Um, e to the minus 2, maybe we can figure it out, but it could get more complicated expression. So you don't want to get wrapped up in that expression. All you need to do, you just, the way I would recommend it, you draw a line like this and put in here e to the minus two. You're basically telling yourself is after two, the value of this is e to the minus two, okay? In reality, it's actually dropping down and all of those kind of stuff. But what I want you to do is just kind of divorce yourself from having to think about what that thing looks like. Now, in order for me to make this a tau, Oh, what do I have to do? All I have to do is make this a tau, right? Make this a tau, and I've got a tau, right? That's H of tau. Remember what we are trying, what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to build two graphs. I'm trying to build X of tau, and I want to build H of T minus tau. And the reason I'm using the H of T minus tau instead of X of T minus tau is because H of T minus tau looks a little easier to build. So in order to do that, I first have to flip this. And if I flip it to get H of minus tau, this would look like Fair enough? Please let me know if you see something that doesn't make sense to you because you could be, I'm going the wrong way and you're gonna let me go all the way down and I have to come back and correct me. So it's a favor to me to ask, to, to let me know if something doesn't make sense to you. All right, so that's it. And the next step is to make a T minus tau. And that's kind of easy because all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw a T in here and I'm gonna throw a T in here as well. So now I've got T minus tau. 
I replaced minus tau, whatever it was, with the T. So now that's what I've got. Now, I still got to remember what this is. So this is going to be basically what? It's going to be anywhere I had a T, I replaced it with T minus tau. So what I'm going to do, this is going to become E to the minus 2 T minus tau. So I remember it. Questions? If no, we'll move on. So what's the next step? The next step is I got to put these ones on top of each other so I can kind of a little more easily see um, the, um, the movement. So I'm actually going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear this piece of paper so I can come back to it if I need to. And I'm going to redraw the curves in a more clean way. So I'm going to do my X of T, which I did from the previous one, the X of T would be this at six, dropping down to one. And uh, this, let's do this, let's call this one tau. And this is actually X of tau, sorry. And um, so we are here, that's at point, um, I forgot what point it was, uh, two, right? And then at zero. I believe it's negative three. Negative, thank you. Thank you, negative. And then at this point, I drop down to negative two. At three, I drop down to negative five and moving on. We good? All right, so the next piece actually I'm going to draw it on a little sticky if I can find the sticky on my desk. The reason for that is because we got to move that one. And in, once you get good at this, you can kind of mentally move it. But for now, we're going to do it physically. I'm going to literally move this little piece of paper. Okay. I'm going to draw, um, I'm going to draw H of um, T minus tau in here. And what we're going to do is this is going to be that's tau. And by the way, this is on zero. I just wanted to draw it so you can kind of see it. This point is t minus two, and this equation is e to the minus two t minus tau. Before I get started, does that make sense to everybody? If you have questions now, so I'm going to wait right here to ask questions. Okay, so if you don't have questions, so what do we do next? What do we do next? Um, we're going to take this thing and we're going to move it here. But I want to move it so this transition point where something interesting is happening is way beyond all the exciting ups and downs that are happening here. So, so typically what we, do, what we say we are doing is we're moving T to minus infinity, okay? So what you're basically doing, you're saying, I am trying to find Y of N when T is bigger or equal to minus infinity to a certain point, okay? Now the question is when is that certain point? That certain point is when something is going to change. So if I've got this thing, if I've got this thing and I'm moving it, right? I'm moving it. When is the first time something interesting is going to happen? And you can privately chat with me to move. I want to see if you can figure out where interesting things happen. So don't send it to everybody. Just send it to me. I want it from everybody. I want you to think about that. I've got a couple of answers, but I want you to think about it when, so remember, so let, let, me, let me write the equation. So, so if, if this thing, let's say, let's say T is at minus infinity, you're way out there before reaching everybody, it's pretty easy because you got a six and this hitting each other and getting up to here. So if I write my, if somebody wants the Y of T, I'll give them the Y of T as equaling integral from uh, minus infinity to wherever this point is, okay? Um, and then, uh, so whatever t minus two is, and then we are integrating x of tau, h of 
T minus tau D tau, right? Basically, after this is going to be zero, so zero something times something is nothing. So I'm not going to integrate over that. I'm only going to integrate from minus infinity to T minus two, and I'm done. Uh, do I know what these are? You bet. I know that H of T minus tau is E to the minus two T, T minus tau, and I know that's six, right? So inside this equation is a no-brainer. This piece inside the equation is simply six times E to the minus two T minus tau. Fair enough? Yeah, now, I can't yeah. see the equation you're writing. Oh, you can't see the equation. Okay, uh, what happened? Maybe I'll, oh, here, there we go. Now you can see, can you see it now? So basically yeah. I'm saying as long, as long as my T is close to minus infinity is back, back here, right? It's back in here. So that means if I look at it at that point, before my pen, the equation for H of T is E to the minus T after my pen is zero. So zero times any X of T is zero. So I don't care about that value. Therefore, I write my integrals to go from minus infinity to T and this is my convolution integral, right? Are we okay? Any questions? Jump in, just turn your microphone on and ask the question. I've got lots of interesting answer. Uh, some of you change your answer, I like it, I like it. So now the question is, how long is this equation correct? When does this equation becomes not correct? And that's what I'm basically asking, asking is six of E times that thing is true how far? So uh, this thing is moving, right? This, this sticky tape, this T, as T grows, as T grows, it, this moves. So I have answers coming at me, T is equal to zero, T is equal to two, T equal to four. What do you guys think? So basically what I'm trying to figure out is where is this point, right? Where is the point where this line and this line line up? And somebody wrote me a beautiful equation which says that happens when T minus two equals to minus two, right? Right? Visually you're looking at it. So you say, okay, this point is where T minus two becomes equal to minus two. That's when this, no, after this point, this equation is no good. So we're gonna make it less than, okay? Can be less than or equal, it doesn't matter, but for now let's use less than. So if I solve this equation, what do I get? T minus two equals to minus two means T is equal to zero. Sounds good? Don't feel bad. The people who got it right usually got it on the second try. So a few people got it on the first try, but that was good. So I'm glad to see you guys are kind of working. And this is really working for me because I get a sense of how many people get it. I like everybody to answer. In this case, I did not have everybody answer me. So in future, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so that basically says this equation is great and I integrate this thing. We all know how to integrate this is done. So the next interval is what happens when T is less than or equal to zero, I'm sorry, larger or equal to zero but less than something else, which means, what are we doing? This head, this thing has moved now for the Y of T's, for Y of T's where the T is in this range. Do you see that? So it's past this point, but haven't quite arrived at that point. So the question is, what's the equation? The equation is gonna be, so, and, and then the next question is, what is this interval? It started here, when T minus two was equal to minus two, when does it stop? stops when it reaches here, which is T minus two equals to zero, which means this is gonna be less than what? So we're gonna be minus to less than, so it's gonna be a zero, so it's gonna be two, right? Did I get the answer? Yeah, perfect. Oh, you guys are getting good. You guys are getting good. Very good, very good, better than me. Took me a while to figure it out. 
So this basically tells me then now, okay, if that is, so all I did was said, okay, T minus two, which is this sitting has to arrive here. So I'll set it to zero, you're done. So this becomes Y of T equals to integral, right? And I'm not doing this integral because I figured you guys can do that pretty easy. So that basically says, I'm gonna integrate this. This gets a bit tricky. This gets a bit tricky because look, you want, this is non-zero all the way from minus infinity to zero, right? So you have two integrals you gotta do. You gotta do an integral from minus infinity to two, to minus two, and that is basically six e to the minus two t minus tau d tau, okay? And then you have to do another integral, which is plus, integrating from minus two to whatever the tip of this thing is, which is T minus two, right? That's a non-zero somewhere in here. And that one is one, the same thing, X of T times la 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 la. That, that equation never changes. So it's gonna be one times E to the minus two T minus tau D Tau. So if somebody wants to find out what y of t is at t equal to one, they got to use this equation. They cannot use this equation. Okay, now let's continue on. This keeps moving. Now we have passed this point and we are in this range. So basically we are saying our t now, the t they're going to, the time they want us to look at this thing is larger or equal to two but it's less than what? Now I need an answer to that one. What do you think? What do you think is the end of this interval? We have we have passed this point because when t becomes two, we have passed that point. But we want to stop where before we arrive here. So what would what would be the t? I have some folks telling me t is going to be five. Do you guys buy that? Very good job, okay. So yeah, yeah, that makes sense because you're saying my T minus two is gotta arrive at three in order to have arrived at this point, right? Three is right here, which means now um, this will be a five, which means Y of T is gonna have this integral. It's gonna have this integral with the modification. So it's gonna be integral from minus two to, uh, forgot where we were, two to zero, e to the minus two t minus tau, d tau. And then what's gonna do, it's gonna move over and um, add, um, there's one more, and this time we're starting from zero, but we're gonna go to t minus two, and this time we got a minus two for our x, but our y is still the same. Oops, I'm running, a, I gotta raise my camera one more time. I think we're done. All right, so, and then the last step is when this thing passes three, then basically says if t, is larger or equal to five and well infinity i can leave it or just put down less than or equal to infinity it's up to you whether you do it or not so what this is gonna do this has got everything because now you've got this thing running all the way back here so you're i'm gonna write the whole thing here it's just gonna have to write it a little smaller y of t has got an interval where this is here that goes from minus infinity to minus two, and that's gonna be six because x is six times e to the minus two t minus tau d tau. And then this piece is gonna be from minus two to zero of one times e to the minus two t minus tau d tau. Plus, this is gonna be integral of, uh, it gets kind of, monotonous, but zero to three of minus two e to the minus two t minus tau d 
tau, these all have to be taus, plus integral of three to t minus two, because this edge, we don't know where it is after we go past somewhere at t minus two, wherever the x, y of t you wanna find. And this is gonna be, uh, so it's gonna be what? Minus five e to the minus two t minus tau. Sorry for the messiness of that. So that's the equation. Now, what I want you to think about, and actually let's do this. Someone comes to you and says, okay, that is great that you have this information. Find y at minus 50. I'm sorry for the big number. I should have probably do a big number. Yeah, that's fine. That's, uh, no, no, let's not do that. That's really ugly. So let's do minus, let's do something simple. It, the idea is the same. So someone comes to you and say, find y of minus one. So your first question is, which one of these equations really applies? And the way you know that is you look through here and say, where, where is t minus one fit? T minus one fits in here, so this is the equation I can use. So simply you say, okay, I'm gonna use this equation and I'm gonna say y of minus one is equal to the integral from minus infinity to minus um, three, six e to the minus two t minus tau d Okay. And by the way, T, we know what it is. T is minus one. So you can just plug it right in here. Okay. So, so let's, let's follow this through and see if we can kind of figure it out. So we know our integrals. We know that six can come out. We know that E to the power of two can come out because that's just a multiplication. And the integral is going to go from minus infinity to infinity of E of two minus three, two tau, d tau. So what did I do? That basically broke this one up, rewrote this one as e to the plus two, right? Plus two t, uh, two tau, basically took the two and multiplied it through. And then rewrote this one more time as e to the two, because it's a constant, I can just take it out, times e to the two tau. Since I'm taking an integral of tau, that's all I need to do. That. We okay so far? Oh, Elsie. Yeah. Um, so when you say when y is equal to negative one and you're trying to find when, is it, do you plug in negative one into t and see what interval that right. fits into? Uh, Right. Or I guess the interval is what I'm confused about. Okay. When you Let me back up. Let me back up and just make sure we are saying the same thing. So I'm not saying y of minus one. I'm saying y at t equal to minus one, right? When I write this thing, I'm saying y when t is equal to minus one, right? So okay. if t is equal to minus one, then I come down here and say, which one of the t's I'm looking for? This definitely is not going to work, right? Because this says t mm -hmm. that'll be larger than zero, so minus one is not gonna work. So that means this is the only equation I can use. The equation relating to this is this guy, right? So I rewrite that equation and put a minus one where t is. So I put okay. a minus one here, I put a minus one in here. Okay, because I was yeah. kind of thinking maybe what you'd solve for is you'd plug in negative one for t minus two. No, 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 for and t, for t. Because you are finding y of t Okay. The T is the one given. Yeah, good, very good question. Very good question. Did everybody understand the question? So when you say you want Y of minus one, you're saying your T is equal to minus one. You're not saying that, you're not saying uh, that your T minus tau is negative one or anything like that. You're saying your T is equal to that. And the nice thing is the math will take care of everything else for you. And at this point, you can do the calculation if, you know, I will let you guys do that because, you know, you, you can figure it out. If not, let me know and I'll be happy to work through that. 
Does that make sense? So for this problem though, you were done once you got here. This was, I tacked on a separate piece to this one, okay? Now, I have time to continue with the second example. You guys are all welcome to stay. But before I go to the second example, I want to take a few minutes and see if there are any questions that you want answered before we go look at the next one. Okay, and if you need to be someplace else, because we are not, we are not, um, you know, this was the only allocated time for class. If you need to be some, don't feel obligated to be here. But what we're gonna do next is since, since Haley had the question, uh, you are welcome to stay and we're gonna go do part B, which is just a little bit different. It's just a graph instead of giving you an equation, it gives you the graph. It's just, to me, it sounds like it's a little further along than not. I had a question. <clears throat> yes. Um, are you going to let us know? I know that last week we talked about including homework problems into the quizzes. Yeah. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. Um, okay. I was just going to wonder, like, are you going to let us know which quizzes are going to require homework problems? I'll, actually, what I was thinking, and I, I like your feedback on this. I was, I was going to have um, the homework submission be a separate quiz so you don't have to worry about submitting it or, or should I because then whatever time you take to copy it and put it up there won't count against you okay okay that's good the only thing the only thing I would require I suppose I wouldn't require it's just up to you but you should probably have done the homework and submitted the homework requirement before you do the relevant quizzes does that make sense mm -hmm. so this way you know, if, if you don't do well, then I can go back and look at your quiz and see kind of if anything, you missed anything that we need you to talk about. So, we'll okay. so let's make it a separate quiz so you don't have to waste your time taking a photo and uploading it while you're working on a quiz. All right. I like that idea. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Okay. No worries. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and move into the next example. And again, if you, if you know how to do 6B, feel free to take off that's 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 fine by me I don't uh, I don't want to hold you here any longer than we have to uh, I will try to put this video on YouTube and link it into um, into the um, canvas if, uh, if for folks who want to go take a look at it okay so um, we're gonna trans oh the Teresa yes Teresa hello can you yeah. hear me yes I can oh, hear so you. Is it okay if you go a little bit slower for a 6B? Because I'm kind of having a little difficulty like absorbing it. So. Perfect. Perfect. So all you have to do, raise your hand when you have a question or you want me to slow down, okay? All right. Thank you. I'm going to take all. So since, since I have till 12 o'clock, <laughs> I think we can take an hour and just kind of mosey down this uh, path of doing this one. And again, if you guys have a question, just raise your hand. If I'm not answering, just if I'm not looking at your question, unmute your thing and hey, say, hey, I have a question. It's okay. You guys are so polite. I thought the reason I had you raise your hand was I thought if everybody jump on at the same time, but you guys are so good that I think we're okay. We don't have to go through the formalities. You can just un unhook your microphone, unmute your microphone and ask the question and we will go from there, okay? All right, so let's go do this together. Uh, so we're gonna do the first one. First thing we need to do though, we need to, f oh, uh, probably everybody doesn't have, so let me, let me do this, um, let's do this two in two steps. I'll draw what the problem was. The problem wants us to find the impulse response, the output of um, two functions, uh, to uh, input into a system. The input is given this way. So input is given as a simple linear line. This point is five, the slope of this is equal to slope equals to four. And then, so, so first thing we gotta do, we gotta kind of find, we have to know what the equation for this line is. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We need to know what the equation for this line. Are you guys, is this clear for you guys or is kind of fuzzy? Or it's just me? Okay. 
that's the best we can get. So this is the slope is equal to four. And again, for folks who would watch this video later on, let me go ahead and say this is six U part B. So this is X of T given. And then in the same problem, the H is given as well, but I'll get to the H of T in a minute. So the first thing I gotta do, I gotta find what the slope, I, they gave me the slope as four, they gave me the intersection at five, and I need to find out what, um, still don't like the quality of this image, so I'm just trying to make it look a little nicer. Okay. All right, so um, so if that's the case, what what do you guys think? Write, write me the equation for the line, how's that? And while you guys do that, I'll go further down and draw the H of T for the time being. And I'm looking for your, oh, equation came back, excellent. I have only one equation. I need a few more equations before I move on. So try it, so. I'm getting a feedback, this is a little fuzzy. So let me see if I can get it, play with my settings. That, uh, a little nicer. Maybe. No. I look like that's the best quality I'm gonna get out of this thing. Maybe a little light will help. All right, I might have to use some other scheme next time. All right, so, um, so we've got a slope. Um, I have only got one. I only, oh, you got two equations. Beautiful, beautiful. More, more, more. I need a few more before we go on. It, everybody is agreeing that the equation for this line is x of t is equal to 4x. 4x? Oh, yeah. So this is x, this is t. So it would be kind of 4t, right? plus intersection is five. So if t is zero, it's five, looks good to me. So I will gonna go, that's the equation for the line. Uh, and you remember the line is basically slope times the, the independent variable plus the intersect. In this case, the intersect is five. So we're good to go. Okay. Okay, so uh, x of t is basically this, this other equation they gave us that kind of looks like this. And of course, we know they could have even given this up to us as an equation and we wouldn't be able, there's an impulse, negative four impulse coming here and this is a little step response here, step function here, so we're good. All right, so the next thing is, again, as I said, to make this a tau, you, all you do is replace the t with the tau here, tau here, call this one tau, and call what's in here tau, and you're ready to, and then make this one a tau, and you're ready to roll, right? Let me ask me questions if that doesn't make sense. So going from x of t to x of tau is pretty easy. Then the next thing is we're gonna come here and we're gonna draw, I'm gonna draw it cleanly so we know what we're looking at. So we've got a, tau here, and this is our x of tau, and this is our line, and we have decided that the x of tau equation for line is four tau plus five, okay? Now we gotta play with this one. This one is a little more complicated, so we need to draw We need to draw h of minus tau. Can you do h of minus tau? Take a minute and kind of think it through, see if you can do it before I do it. So, so we, oh, see, I didn't think of this. I gotta give myself enough room. So um, we wanna flip it, right? So if I wanna flip this thing, I better give myself enough room on the negative side of things to draw it. 
So if this is tau, this is zero, instead of this being six, it's gonna be minus six. Height is four, drops down. Instead of this being 12, this is gonna be minus 12, and it's dropped down to minus four. So now I have h of minus tau. Are we okay? So how do I make this h of t minus tau? That's the next step. All I do, I replace this with a t. Add a t here, right? I'm replacing every minus tau with the t minus tau. And there we have it. Now let me go ahead and put this one under here. So we actually, you know what? Actually, it doesn't really matter in this case. So, so let's do this. So, so for this one, I've got minus 4 here. This sits at minus 12. And then at 0, I've got minus 4, t minus 6, 4, 0, t. Tom, how are we doing so far? Questions? So I've got my x of t, I've got my h of t minus tau, and now the question is, what are the intervals? What are the intervals? How many intervals do I have? I need the number from you guys. How many different intervals do I have? Wouldn't it be from negative infinity to infinity? That's it. You have one in one. You just have one. Because it's the same regardless of where it is. You see that? It gets a bit. So, so, so this is, um, so basically we're saying that when we write this equation, we don't have a distinction. We're going to say, we're going to look, try to write the equation from minus infinity to infinity. Right? So, um, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the value of t is, right? It's, it's always going to be a non-zero relationship between those. Okay? All right. So, so, the equa so the, 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 when you write y of t, the response from here, you're going to use the integral that goes from minus infinity to infinity, x of tau, h of t minus tau. You know, this is the general equation we always write. Now I have to think about what is x of tau. Well, that's easy. x of tau, I already have x of tau, right? I go up here and look at it. x of tau is simply 4 tau plus 5. Done. That was easy. That was the easy part. Now the question is, what in the world is I going to do with this thing? This is a really weird stuff. Okay, so I can think about it. I can say, look, the only time this is going to, the only time, based on this guy, right? Uh, where is? Oh, I don't have a cursor. This is my finger. Is my cursor? I'm trying to use the cursor to point at this thing. It just doesn't work. So if you look at this thing, when is the only time that this part of h of t minus tau is going to be non-zero? Only when t is equal to minus 12, right? And you're done. So, so you can think about it that way, which means I can say, okay, this, this is telling me the only time I'm going to care about this in this t minus 12, right? So all I have to do to take care of this piece, this piece, I'll say, okay, I'm going to multiply the x of t by my minus 4, and the x of t is basically going to be when tau, when tau is equal to t minus 12. So I'm going to write it as 4 times t minus 12 plus 5. So that takes care of this piece. Now, how am I going to take care of this piece? This piece is a bit more tricky because it says the only time I care about this integral 
is when that integral, the T, the tau of that integral is between these two points. So basically it says, instead of going from minus infinity to infinity, I only care about this integral when it goes from T minus six to zero. And the magnitude of this is four, right? It's four times four T minus, um, I'm sorry, so, so tau, so this would be a tau. I'm making a mess of it, four tau, that's all, uh, plus five. I didn't need the parentheses, but since I put it in there, I'll keep it. I'm gonna hang on here because I went through a lot of different things and Teresa told me to go a little slower. So <laughs> I'm gonna stop right here and ask a question, see if that makes sense. While you guys are, well, let me, let me be silent and I'll, yeah, go for it. Teresa. So I think I'm still a little stuck on the, so does the negative infinity and to infinity, I'm just kind of confused about how. Okay. Remember, remember how we deal, remember how we deal with integrals when they, when the function changes? What yeah. do you do with an integral when function changes? You break them to its pieces, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So in a sense, in a sense, what we did, we did, um, and I'm going to make a mess of this. So let oh, me just, okay. in, a, in a sense, I went back here and said, look, this function doesn't change, right? But mm -hmm. this function has two pieces. So what I basically says, I got a function that goes from minus t minus 12 to t, that's not the right way to write it, but I'll write it anyway. So it's non-zero just at that point, right? Mm -hmm. For x of tau, d tau. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay, and this one is only true, it's only true when it goes from t minus six to zero. So I guess what I'm confused is, because it's, multiplied by each other so can true, you break true. it apart yeah. like yes that? yes absolutely you yeah yeah because remember here your h of t is what is a fixed minus four right uh-huh and oh, here okay. here your your h of t is what just a fixed four and your x of t so you're really not messing so you're treating you're treating this multiplication as one piece one function. So from your point of view, it's, from your point of view, this whole thing is one function after you multiply it. And you okay, just look at it. That makes a lot more it. sense. Yeah, and, and you're looking at it and you say, look, as long as if you're not here or you're not here, your h of t minus tau is zero. So it doesn't matter what x of t is, it's going to be zero. So you're only looking at it that way. So from here, you guys can take care of it, right? It's just an integration and you're done. Now, you, can also, you could have also done this a little bit differently if you wanted to be purely mathematical. And this is my opportunistic time to just talk about the other method. You're done for the graphical method, you're done. But you could have also come here and say, hey, I know what this is. This is, this, we know how this works. This one is simply an impulse function, right? an impulse function of tau minus t minus 12, right? This piece is simply minus four, the magnitude times where this goes to zero. And this one is just a step response. So that is simply, I'm not sure how, this is four times u of, T minus actually got to get rid of that second parenthesis. This minus T minus six, and this is not a T. This is a tau. Sorry, the vector or variable is tau, and then this is minus U of tau. So that's just another way to write. If, if you want, if you prefer to write it as a 
mathematical relationship. This is this this is an impulse function that starts here and goes. This is an impulse function that starts here and goes. You subtract it, you just get this little this just get little piece left. Okay. So um, I have a question. Sure. For me it seems like the bottom equation, the original graphical one, like it doesn't go from negative infinity to infinity. Which equation? The bottom. Uh, the first first one that you did, the bottom one, yeah. This one? I don't know, like it seems like it shouldn't there be like an integral or something that incorporates negative infinity to infinity. This one? No, or, or are you saying, are you saying you don't think this is going from here to here? I, I can't see anything. Oh, can you see it now? Oh, yeah, yeah. there you go. My, uh, yeah, somehow it's, my it's, internet says it's unstable. I don't know what's causing it to be unstable, but anyway, let me know if you don't see anything. So, so let's, let's think about it. The, the, you, when you write convolution integral, you always write it from minus infinity to infinity, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then you look at your function, you say, look, if, if I'm not at this point, if I'm not at this point, if I'm back here, there's no overlap. Right? This is zero times this is zero, the zero times zero. The only time that's of interest is this point and this point. So yes, my original integral was from minus infinity to infinity, but the only parts that are non-zero and I care about them happens at this point and at that interval. And that's what these two are. Okay, and so and it moves along the upper graph, I guess, multiplying it by changing what the variable t is. Yeah, it's automatically integrated. See that? Okay. You can and move like, it just sense, anywhere you want to move it. It really doesn't matter because these these t minus twelve and t minus six are not fixed. They move. Okay. This, this gets a bit weird too. I mean, I hate to go there, but what if t is equal to 50? What does this graph look like? Just think about what t, look, t, t equal to 50 makes this look like. Actually, all of this is gonna be on the other side, wouldn't it? Do you see it? Because if t is equal to 50, this point is where? It's 50 minus 12, which is sitting at 38. And where is this point? This point is sitting at 40, uh, whatever, 44. Um, if it doesn't make sense, don't, don't worry about that. I might have. So all I'm doing is basically saying, remember T, they tell you what T is. In here, it looked like a constant, but they're going to tell you what T they're asking you to find the impulse at. And, uh, and this, because we wrote it in terms of T, it automatically takes care of moving you to the right place. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, good, good. Anything else? All right, so what I'll do is uh, hopefully this is recorded um, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that recording up on as part of the um, canvas, you will see it there, okay? <laughs>